we've we've done like two months now um, since we we've, we've been active, and it's really just all things, not necessarily real estate, but just freedom in general. You know, whether it's leadership that people need, it's uh, you know looking at different whole life policies. It's it's the whole thing, estate planning, everything that encompasses you being able to tap into your own genius. You know, just so happens to be sitting around real estate investing is a great way to build passive income. Um, but there's definitely other ways out of there around there. Nobody's as good at freedom as me. I'm just not as good at real estate as other people. There you go. That's the thing, man. And that's the thing. People, they get caught up. I got to have a thousand units, you know, be like Grant Cardone or I got to have, you know, hundreds of doors like, man, you can be well. You can have 10 single family homes if you know how to do it right. And, and and live right. The number one problem that I see actually on that point that I've run into for the last few years, because a lot of people have, you know, I've been in real estate almost seven, eight, nine years now. And so a lot of people along that timeline have gotten very wealthy. And the problem that I see, the number one real problem that I see is not people that they know how to make money. What they have a problem with is, okay, I have money, but I still don't have a fulfilling life. Mm. Or like, to compound off of that, they're like, well, I have this money, but I don't do anything with it. My family's maybe a wreck. My spouse, you know, maybe not where I want it to be. I don't travel. I don't have any hobbies. Like it consumes me. So I have all this money, but it doesn't serve me. And so this is the problem that I run into very much. And, you know, it does, my lifestyle does require sacrifice. Like, um, and I'll get into what, what I do with my time, but I'll, my, my way does require um, sacrificing what a lot of people would buy a thousand units. But, you know, I live a, an incredibly fulfilling, well-rounded lifestyle. That's not just like, it's gr like, it's still very growth minded. It's just more holistic. Um, and so we do a lot of traveling. We do um, book club. You know, we do a lot of reading that are not just business books. I do an immense amount of networking. I'm one of the best networkers in the real estate community. Um, and so, and those opportunities, those sort of investments that are intangible, that don't look like units, Right. right. They lead to opportunities and lifestyles that, you know, they're harder to see. And so people, I'm like, you're sacrificing this for this unit, but you're actually, you know, you're maybe not investing in your family relationship, which is with you for a lot longer than the real estate's going to be with you. Or, um, you know, the, the network, the larger network or the relationships or the handshakes or seeing the world and having the experience and those sort of things have, um, have uh, returns on investment that people don't sort of appreciate in the short run, but man, big, high, high, high returns on investment in the long run. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I won't steal your thunder, man. I'll let you go in and kind of dive into, you know, I, whatever you got. I tell people come as you are and, um, and just share with us, you know, the, the big takeaway. And then we'll ask a few questions on the back end. Yeah, whatever you need. Happy to, happy to help us. But yeah, I think the uh, the big piece, man, really just introduce introduce yourself to us and uh, tell a little bit about your story. Uh, yeah, my name is Alex Felice. I I am currently in Maui, um, but you know, uh, Johnny, like you, had, uh, I don't know. Were you in the army? I was in the army, so I joined Air at Force. eighteen Air Force. Yeah, so I joined it. Um, the story is really impactful when I tell it this way. I turned, I graduated high school in July. I turned eighteen in August. In September of that year was 2001, so September 11th. And in October, I was signed up for MEPS and I went to basic training. So that's how I sort of got my um, young life taken off. Uh, so very intense. Um, and did that and got out in 05, really sort of squandered a bunch of time. I ended up selling cars and had a very big lack of self-belief and self, um, a lot of self-doubt in what I could accomplish. And that's a, that's a tragedy, I think, that hits a lot of people and you know, I hated it. So you just got to keep trying through life. And then somewhere along the way, I, um, around 2010, I started getting my life together and I was like, okay, I'm going to go to school for finance. Cause I wanted to learn about money. Cause I was sick of being broke all the time. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go learn about money. Um, um, it was 2011 or so. I remember looking at the, at my life and I was like, well, I have no, I had no job at the time. I had no real skill sets. I was arrogant as they get. Um, I had a negative 40 something thousand dollar net worth. And I was like, dude, I'm just going to turn all this around hundred percent, no matter what, I'm just going to turn around. So went and got a degree in finance, went into banking, started looking at real estate, started buying real estate. And 
I just, you know, that just consumed me. I'm telling the short version, obviously, because people's lives are complicated, but uh, I just focused on real estate from 2014 to about 2020. Nothing but real estate. I accumulated uh, the total, at the max, it was like 85 doors or something. Um, I had syndicated two apartment buildings. Um, I had been on the Bigger Pockets podcast and just really, really went hard on real estate. And along the way, I did the thing that a lot of people, I think, or my unique way of doing life was I said, I don't want real estate to be my only business. I want to have something that was like creative along the way. So I started picking up cameras. If you've ever seen me in person or out in the world, you've seen me with a big full frame, fancy camera. And that's just what I do. And, um, and, uh, and that's just what I do. And that was just a hobby that I encourage everybody to get a hobby that you can put your passions into that isn't a monetary thing because the returns on investment of something that you just love for no reason other than you love it is very, very high. So around 2020, you know, everybody knows the real estate market went gangbusters, but it kind of, I, I kind of stopped buying and I was like, okay, well, while prices are going up and there's volatility in the market, um, I had a little bit of freedom. So I said, let's go travel the world. So last two years, I, um, went to like, I don't know, seven or eight different countries, dozens of US cities. I went to conferences all over the country, shook a lot of hands, took a lot of pictures and just developed a lot of relationships. And yeah, and that's that's kind of where we got to Maui where I'm, I'm helping, you know, this real estate guy develop a new, a new company um, doing what I love best, which is cameras and people. And my real estate background helped me get into the circle and it informed that, but that's my real estate knowledge is not what I'm here for. And so that's okay. why I look at my life and I was like, dude, well-rounded, being able to speak multiple languages. Like I speak cameras, I speak content. Everybody wants content these days. I don't know if you noticed, right? Yeah. Everybody, everybody wants to look good on the internet or everybody wants to be valuable or, or put out valuable content on the internet. So that's kind of a broad way to say like real estate has informed my life, um, but it is not a, I, uh, it has not you know, become my life. It's, it's, I like being diverse. How do you I have a question for you, uh, Alex? So, how do you define uh, freedom? Since since we're we're on that topic, yeah. So, um, you know, financial freedom is certainly one part of freedom, right? Because in a lot of ways, people in this country are born. This is maybe a controversial topic, but I'm not that shy. Um, people are born into this sort of system, especially people my age, because it does change by by demogra- uh, by. Um, age people are born into this system where like we're really encouraged to buy stuff that we don't need and th- and then and spend money on debt and and sort of live outside of our means buy ha- big houses buy nice cars you know get a big family like and and you know get student loan debt and all these things and you become a wage slave right you become burdened to this like ongoing debt service this every i got a, i got a monthly nut and and that's all fine. And, but there comes a point where for me, I was like, um, if I just live less, if I just willing to sacrifice and live less. And I'm not talking about like, like living in a hovel and eating peanut butter, but like, just, I don't have to have fancy, nice new cars. Like, I can just live without debt and I can live less. And so then you get um, financial freedom and it doesn't cost that much, um, but it does take sacrifice. But then you start to realize that there are other kinds of freedom that are really important. There's like, you know, there's um, freedom of, you know, we talk about freedom of speech as a right, but the reality is most people are not infringing on our freedom of speech. We self-inflict censorship by not being willing to say the things that we think because we're afraid of the social pressures, mm. right? On the internet, to our bosses, to our family, to our friends. So there's social freedom of saying, I don't care what you think. I'm going to say my, what, what I think. I'm going to say it, you know, hopefully well thought out, not just to antagonize the world, but I'm going to say things that I think are, um, what I believe to be true and, and without, the, without the fear of ramifications of social pressure. That's, that's a freedom that I think is under talked about. And especially with the internet, everybody wants to be like popular, right? Well, the reality is um, when you dull down your speech, you become inauthentic. And so then it's like, it's lose-lose, but it's a hard, it's a hard freedom to, to have. Everybody who watches this, Johnny, I mean, everybody who's probably bought real estate or invested has had somebody in their family, their friend group, their social group, tell them that they're crazy. <laughs> right. Ignoring that is freedom. So social pressures. Um, 
and, and it goes deeper. I can go into it. You know, when I started reading, I started, re I was not a lifelong reader, but in 2014, 15, maybe earlier than that, I started um, podcasts, but then I started listening to audiobooks. And I found it really quick. I was like, I was reading all the books that everybody reads, these business books and, and motivational books. And, and I wanted to learn things and, and they're wonderful, but I find them to be very narrow in what you can learn and what you can do with them. And then, so then you're, you're like, well, I got all the, and, and entrepreneurs very, very often like to say, you've read enough, take action. You've, not, you've read enough to go take action. And, and, and that is in a vacuum in a very small domain, that's very good advice. But like, I'm a deeply curious person and I wanna learn. And I wanna learn for the sake of learning. I wanna learn that doesn't make money. I just wanna learn about humanity and history and the world. And I just like learning stuff. And, and so I started reading books that nobody else in my peer group was reading. Dead Russian philosophy, Dostoevsky, Nietzsche. Um, and, and I had to go do it alone because in my entrepreneurial groups where everybody was like growth minded, it, what I found was it was growth minded in only certain ways. And that's not a criticism. That's just, again, it goes, if you want to be truly free, you have to be sort of independent meaning you have to be like free from the constraints of the social group that it is a very healthy social group for you to be in entrepreneurs, growth minded, personal growth, but also, you know, everybody has limitations. So whatever group you choose to be in is the, just the next box that you put yourself into. So the first box of like, you know, Hey, we're going to buy cars and houses. And that's like a, it's a constraint. I can't get out of that box. Well, now I go to this financial freedom box and they're all doing this. And it's like, okay, but they're going to tell you that reading Tolstoy is a waste of time. And I'm going to tell you that my relationship with my fiance now is the healthiest relationship that I've ever been in my life because I read Tolstoy. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I was constrained by the box, the very healthy box of growth minded people that I put myself into. So freedom comes in, I wouldn't even just say stages, but it's very true. Freedom is like, freedom of self, it's very hard to like look at your world and say, I'm going to do what is best for me, no matter what the financial pressure is, no matter what the social pressure is. And no matter what, like, it's hard to say, I'm going to go travel the world. Traveling the world doesn't pay any money, but I know that it's what's best for me. So sometimes it's like being able to say no to a lot of social pressures, just reading things that other people don't read. And, and so that's a, that's, that's the hardest freedom is the social freedom. The financial freedom is actually kind of easy. Got it. No, most definitely. Oh. That's a lot to unpack, Alex. So, yeah, I'm sorry. So, so yeah. how, how was the how was that transformation going? Going from your upbringing, going through the military, having those experiences, to now that individual that's reading those type of books, that's kind of going down the unbeaten path. Kind of, kind of, what was that pivotal piece in that transformation to get there for you? So, um, I am a deeply contrarian person by nature can't help it don't want to help it so just by like my nature i'm like have this sort of this is my brash way of saying it it's like whatever i look at what everybody else is doing i assume what the masses are doing i assume the masses are idiots and i'm like whatever they're doing i'm just going to go do the opposite i assume everybody's wrong so like okay go do this over here that is not good advice right that is not like universally good advice but it does have its um oh it's raining can you hear that um Mm -hmm. uh, good. Uh, but it does have its unique benefits of being able to say like I'm okay with going against the grain and then when you go and you do something that other people aren't doing and it offers you a benefit or a return on investment or a reward um, it's kind of like in 2014 I asked five of my friends like hey I'm going to go buy real estate and they're like you're an idiot the real estate market just crashed what are you thinking and I did it anyways and it's like one of the best things I ever did Right. If I asked a lot of entrepreneurs, Johnny, you and I are in a lot of social groups, right? If I went and asked Bill Allen, should I go right. pick up a camera and be a camera guy? He'd be like, it doesn't pay. Don't do that. It doesn't pay. There's no money in cameras. And he's right. But it would be, and this is not a big on Bill. This is just that, you know, Bill's, Bill's yeah, yeah, yeah. very, very focused on what he does. And I appreciate that for him. But this is what freedom is. It's, it's, it's doing what's best for, I don't want to say it's doing best, what's best for self, because that's not about self. It's that I have to do what um best for my like how can I best serve the world at large and I know there's a creative streak in me that if I ignore to make money I lose and everybody who I give my talent to loses 
So, you know, that's why I had to get out of the army, right? I was in for four years and I was like, look, too structured. I need a little bit more chaos, right? Oh, I can only imagine. I <laughs> can only imagine you in the service. Oh, no. It's, yeah. yeah. I, I was not a bad shoot, but I, I did four years and I got out. I was like, okay, we're, we obviously don't love each other here. So, um, but it's, um, you know, everybody has their own path. I think the contrarian path is very valuable. I think it's good to, for people to like say, to look at their life and say, it's okay if I don't fit in to the plan that other people have told me to fit into. And the, we have this, you know, we live in this culture right now where, um, and I'm guilty and everybody's guilty, but, you know, it seems to me that everybody on the internet sort of role, everybody in the internet's role now is to educate the next person. And so like now we live in a world where everybody's a teacher and everybody's telling you what is best for you. And so I go to the internet and they're like, here's what you should do. 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 And well, who do you listen to? Because they can't all have good advice. And so it's become very hard. And you know, some people have great video setups and they sound good and they really work the algorithm and you hear them every day. And like Alex Shamozi will tell you every day to wake up and be regimented and do this and do this and do this. And I'm like, but I don't want your life, bro. And, and the problem is, if you go to your peer group, he is undeniably successful. Right. And so how do you go to your peer group and say, you're all wrong. I don't want that. So I think it takes a little bit of courage. I think it takes a lot of courage to be an individual in our culture right now. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think I'm sort of thankful that my personality allows me to just be disagreeable for no reason. I thought it was great. But for a lot of people, I think that what they're going to do is they're going to follow the advice of those who are popular. That is not necessarily right for them. It's just the loudest. Yep. No, I think that's that's wonderful because I agree. You know, everybody's a consultant. Everybody's a coach. And uh, it gets to the point where is that, you know, even with me getting into the coaching realm, it was like I had so many people but time after time. Hey, yep, I signed up for this. They took I paid them five thousand dollars. They just showed me how to get an EIN and, and set up an LLC. And that was it. And, you know, we and it's crazy. Like you say, everybody wants to be an expert. Everybody's coaching. Everybody is, you know, on social media and the flash and, you know, everybody's an expert. But it's like, OK, there's a better way. And, uh, you know, and, and I had a conversation like, you know what, I could easily if it was up to me, I, I could literally just not be on social media, go live my life and be fine. And but like you said, that that calling, you know, having that balanced life, understanding what you want from life and knowing, hey, why am I here? This is this gives me energy. This is why I'm doing what I do. And it's like, OK, I guess there, there, there's so many people out here that want the information but don't necessarily know how to get it. They don't know there's another way to going and giving 50, 60 hours a week and trading that time to get a paycheck, like you said, to, to pay the debt and just be on the race. And the next thing you know, you're 65, 70, you're like, where's my life going to? And that really, really sucks. Yeah, so I don't want to disparage people who are like, you are speaking because I think in many ways, like, I've been with a bunch of people on the internet trying to serve the next person and saying like, here's what I learned. And I want to help you. Like, I really like that. And I like that there are people who would be a leader and say, I wish that a open program. I'll start a, a course and, and try to help. And, you know, it is, it is definitely a difficult moment for the individual to find out what's most valuable because there's a lot of things that have been sold for $50,000, $5,000 that aren't worth it. And, and that's hard. But I also don't ever want to call somebody that they shouldn't go off and speak. If they do know something, you can help. You should help. So, I think right now it's a really difficult moment for people to like, you know, kind of what I said, so sit down, you know, think about who you really are. Think about what you would do if you could like close your eyes and like clear out, like take some time, go to nature and like think about like, what if I live without the source of suffering? What would that really look like? And then like, maybe, you know, try to have the courage to like start changing the relate. A lot of it's just relations here, right? Like all of life can be summed up to the content you consume and who you spend time with. Who are you listening to and who are you interacting with? And if you can change those, you can have any life you want. That's 
Yeah, I guarantee that. Uh, and, and never in the history of humanity has more access to people um, than easier. So yep. I, I don't want to say that it's um, I don't want to say that it's easy. I will say that it's never been as easy, but it still takes courage to say to look at your wake up, like you said, people that go 65 years, they live a life they don't really like, they look back and like, why did I do this? It's hard to look at 25, it's harder at 35, it's harder at 45 to look in the mirror and say, I'm, I'm, this is not what I want. I think I can do more. Or, you know, weird things like, what is my natural tendency? Why do I make mistakes? Like, like why do I not do the things that I want to do? I say I want to do, go to the gym. I say I want to travel the world, but I never buy a plane ticket. Mm. Why do I, the person who wants to do that, and probably has the money to do it and the time, but then I don't actually do it. Like, why does that happen? Right? That's a really weird thing to ask. And then people go, they don't, they don't ever spend the time to say, I need baby help. I don't need a coach. I need a better social group. I need accountability. I need, yep. Um, and so there's just a lot of um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of people that are selling easy information and information is, is certainly valuable but there's like a second component to it it's like who's holding you accountable and that's just like mentors but like who this is where a lot of people in my life really like me because if you text me like hey Alex, i'm having this problem i'm the first the easiest one like dude, all i know is tough luck so i'm like this is your fault you know it and i don't want to hear it <laughs> so like fix it or accept that you're not weak enough you're not strong enough to do what you think you want to do. Just, I don't want to stop complaining about it and fix it. I don't want to hear that. But I will hold people accountable because I'm like, you know, either go to the gym or say that you want to be out of shape. But like, this whole like, um, you know, but you need people in your life who will do that. Now, maybe that's not good for, I'm not for everybody. I'm okay with that. But you need people in life who are going to like believe in you more than you. Right, and then they'll hold you accountable. Like, dude, I know you're not living up to your potential. Like, get it together. I don't know what that means. Sometimes they can they can act. You know, sometimes that's structured, and sometimes it's just like you need a kick in the ass. And but, but this this idea that like um you can just spend five thousand dollars and buy the information that would change your life is almost rarely the case. Right? It's like spend five thousand dollars and get somebody on your team. Or get part of an accountability group or a mastermind or a coaching and like get somebody that's going to some people are good at hold a handholder. Yeah. Some people are good at educating. Some people are good at inspiring. Some people are good at tough love. Right? But like whatever it is that you need, um, it's probably generally not what you want, what you need, what to do. Hundred um, percent. and I and I apologize to anybody who like I'm rambling, but like um this idea that you know a five thousand dollar um passive course where you just would watch it is going to change your life i think is i think is rare i think um i think there's value in spending money on accountability um but accountability is not always fun most of the time it's not not the good one not the good accountability yeah i think it doesn't matter how Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna say it doesn't matter how how much content you consume, but it's either you do it or you don't. That's it. Yeah, and you know, my friend Spencer said this thing to me years ago. He said, um, "Motivational content is um, it's like mental masturbation, right? So it makes you feel really good, but nothing changes." Yep. And so this is why, like, this is this is my complaint with when I started reading books, and I said, "All of these, like." Um, you know, motivational books where I, it's a dopamine. It's a dopamine. Hit. It's not wisdom. It's not something I can internalize. It was just, wow, that felt good. Can I have another one of those? And it's like, there's not enough self help books in the world to keep you, you know, say, uh, distracted enough from the, pro- the fact that your life isn't getting any better. So then people right. like, I read all the, I'll read the 10 extra for the third time this year. It's like, it's not. <laughs> It's not, that's not the solution. I agree with you. So, um, so you asked in the chat, who is the person that you admire for their freedom of life? Um, there's a lot of content creators I really, I really look up to. There's a guy named um, Peter McKinnon, not an entrepreneur, 
who's just an unbelievable YouTube creator. And um, he's somebody who like creates for the sake of it. I really like him. Um, and there's people that are in our world that I really look up to that are entrepreneurs that do, Gary Lee is probably the perfect example of a person who is like, I do not care what you think and has the success to back it up to say like, I don't care if you don't, if you don't like what I said, I don't care if you don't like my language. Um, and he talks, he puts his opinions out on a lot of like important cultural issues. Um, I'm trying to think of some others. Um, there's a guy named Nassim Taleb, my hero, my hero, hero, hero. He is a, a long-term um, investor a, um, and an author. And he wrote a book, of, his most famous book is called The Black Swan. But he wrote five books called um, Encerto and they are what shaped my life. And he is a deep contrarian and he is mouthy. And if you catch him on Twitter, he is like, basically, if you say something stupid, he's like, hey, I just blocked people who are idiots. No, nothing personal. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to talk to you. You just block. You say stupid things. <laughs> and so he was very abrasive. And he's like, look, I want to talk to smart people. I've made enough money that I do not have anybody to impress. I do not make content um, to sell anything. I write my books because I have thought he has incredibly, he's an incredibly brilliant guy. And he writes his books. And then he's like, I don't care if anybody likes it, don't need you. And his ability, like his, his level of freedom is unbounded. I see it. Yeah. That reminds me of the book of Mark Manson, The Subtle Art of Not Giving in an F. Not sure if yeah. you guys have read that, but that's really a great book. Uh, I follow Mark Manson on Twitter. Yeah. I haven't read, I've read, I think I've read one of his books, but um, yeah, I think Mark Manson, but probably. Oh. Three times more offensive. <laughs> like he is not trying to sell success. He's like, he's a mathematician. And he's like, this is the math. It works. I don't care if you agree. <laughs> so tell, can can you tell us about more about the your your tagline broke is a choice? Yeah, I'm actually trying to grow out of that right now. So in 2017, I had bought three or four houses and I was like, man, you know, the life that I was living at that point versus the life that I lived five years earlier was starting to dramatically change, you know? I went from a negative 40 network to like, you know, a $200,000 network in three or four years. I had basically done it all long distance from Las Vegas. I was buying houses in North Carolina and I had done it on a $50,000 a year income. And I was like, this is a good story. And I know that if I could do it, and it changed my life that I know I can help other people to change their life. And so I was like, let me blog about this. I need something, I need a place to write my, it was just a place to like share my story. So if you came across me, you're like, oh, this guy, you know, here's what I, it wasn't really educating. It was more just like, here's what I did. Here's how it works. And here it's very transparent. And I needed a name and I wanted something that was borderline offensive. But also one of those things where you look at it and you're like, yeah, but it's kind of true. And that's very much my style. When I'm going to say things, you're like, okay, well, nobody wants to say that or hear it, but it isn't a lie. So it just puts everybody in a sort of an uncomfortable position. And that's, really where I, that's like really my sweet spot. And so I said, um, you know, the general premise was for 31 years of my life, I was broke. And it wasn't because the world took a dump on me or because I had an unfair shake or because um, it wasn't because I wasn't smart enough and it, and it wasn't because it was because my lousy choices. It's because I drank away my money. It's because I didn't save. It's because I didn't invest. I didn't spend any time learning how to invest. I basically just went through the, the days living paycheck to paycheck and I was always thinking the same things that most of middle, most Amer America thinks, which is I'll get promoted into prosperity I'll get raises and save money then, or you know, the most arrogant in the back of my head was basically like, well, one day someone, the world will figure out I'm awesome and I'll become rich. Mm. And that's like the general gist of like how people think that their life was gonna happen. It's like, oh, one day it'll just work out because we'll figure out how great I am. And, and then actually from there, life got worse for me. 
And then, so I was like, okay, fine. What if we do it this way? My way is not working. And that's what the acceptance that people have to really take in is my way is not working. You're 30 years old. Maybe you got a bad shake in life. Maybe you got a good shake in life. But if you're 30 years old and your life is, and you're like, oh, I'm in debt, but I have a car. It's like, well, you can drive a feeder car. You can go on Craigslist and spend a thousand dollars and get something. And it won't be pretty, but it'll do all the same things your expensive car does. It just won't be fun, but it'll work. And if you're willing to sacrifice, like what kind of house are you living in, right? Are you willing to live in a house for 600 bucks a month, a dump, somewhere maybe even a little risky, a little scary? But like, what do you want to do? What sacrifices are you willing to make to have your life better in the future? Because if you're sort of like living nice now and you're not getting ahead, you're sacrificing your future. So would you rather sacrifice the now or sacrifice the future? And so what I did was I just started making difficult choices. I sold my reasonable $30,000 car and I bought a $1,200 truck that was so ugly, man. It was so bad. But, but I did it. I started not going out. I stopped not buying food out. I just stopped all of it. It just stopped. I just got so sick of it. And so what happened was it turns out that if you do the um, richest man in Babylon sort of method and you pay yourself first, so simple. And so no matter what, I looked at my, when the income came in, 20% of it went to an account that I just couldn't spend. And that was that. And there was no ifs, ands, or buts. And so future Alex always comes first. Today, Alex eats ramen. And that's just, that's just what's going to happen. And so I did that. And like, dude, it was like a year and a half goes by and I'm like, I had like five or $6,000 in my account. I had never had that much money before in my life. And I was like, this works. Are you serious? And then so that was like 2011. In 2014, 2014, I go off and I look and I bought a foreclosure on the, um, on the MLS, right? Now you can't do that to the state these days because the real estate market had just crashed and that was just luck. And that's, that's part of trying. When you try in life, when you're looking for opportunity and you're looking for luck, you will find it. And so I'm looking around for a house and I bought a house for like $54,000. And it was, I was able to move in it. So I got an FHA loan and I put like four grand down and I moved in it and it was a dump, but it was like, you know, a livable dump. And I went in there and I painted some walls because you know what paints cheap. And I, I put some floors down. I went to Walmart or Costco and I bought a bunch of floors and I paid like $900 and I bought floors and I put new hardwood laminate floors, LVP. And I did it myself because like, because I could. And I want to say I probably put you know, a couple, four or $5,000 of sweat equity and like materials into this house. And in 2015, a year later, 18 months later, I go to the bank and I was like, what's that thing worth? And they tell me it's worth 115,000. Nice. And now, you know, it hit me. Like I knew it was going to work when I did it, but it hit me like a ton of books. And I was like, dude, my entire life, I lived one way, week to week, like buying bullshit, food, alcohol, clothes, cars, nonsense, because everybody else was doing it. This is what I'm talking about before, about freedom. If everybody else seems like they're doing it and you're doing it, you're like, we're, it's America, we're so free. And they're saying this stuff, but you're not free. You're actually trapped by the people who tell you what normal is. And so I ignored all them. I got rid of all those friends and I just said, I'm going to make mad sacrifice and live. There was no, there was just a, there was just a hole in the dashboard. And my buddy drives the BMW one day, a buddy of mine, he's like, is that just a hole in the dashboard? And he laughs at me. And I was like, yeah. And it was like an embarrassing for a moment. That guy still drives a BMW that he can't afford. Mm. Right. And so like, I had to really have the courage to ignore the popular people that in my social group at the time, not forever, the social the people that I had chosen at the time and say, okay, I'll ignore those. And I bought this house. And so I went from a negative net worth, right? I sold everything. I made that sacrifice to like, what I bought, I had a $54,000 mortgage. I had probably paid it down a little bit extra. So I think I had like probably call it 51, 52. And then it was worth 115. In like two years, bro. Not from hitting the lottery. Not from anything profound. Just from the two things. Sacrifice and choices. And that's it. And actually it's just choices. The cho sacrifice is a choice. And that's really it. And so when I got to... I'm, this is the, I'm so long-winded. I'm so sorry. And so when it came time to make the website, I was like, broke is a choice. If you're broke, it's your choice. And you know what? If you want to make money, you should be broke by choice. And then 
save, invest, save, invest. And then um, you will be like my ability to like pay my overhead is I don't look to these are $28 sunglasses, right? I don't have a lot of fancy stuff, but I live a huge life. Nice. I usually live a huge life because, because um, I just don't spend it on things that are non-meaningful. Last year we went to Iceland. I don't think that thing, I don't think that thing cost me two grand for four days in Iceland, right? I went to Spain. That definitely didn't, that cost me maybe 1500 bucks, right? I went to Germany. I went to Belize, uh, where else we go? Colombia. And I went to Guatemala. And I bet you I probably, I, I, I spent a good, I may, maybe I spent, maybe I spent six grand on all of that. Right. And I got the pictures that'll show you that it was no cheat. It was no like, it was no skimpy trip. We didn't stay in like, I don't want to say we stayed in nice places, but it wasn't that. I went to, I went to places that were very, very, how do I say it? Very valuable in life. And so I, I don't mean to ramble, but the point is like these people that, to go back to the original thing, these people that are chasing like, I got to get a thousand units. And I'm like, you don't even know what to do with the money. And you're going to buy a house that you're now tied to. Now you have to have the thousand units. Now you're stressed out when the tenants don't pay. Like you're so, you, you, yeah, you're trapped. And it's like, dude, freedom isn't that expensive dollar-wise. Freedom is expensive here and here. It's courage. And so if you want to learn how to make billions of dollars, dude, I can't help you. But I can tell you that I live a lot happier than a lot of people that have a lot more money than me. And they're a lot fulfilling. My relationships are, are happier and deeper. So it's just, it's, it's about choices. It's about sacrifice. Not like unbounded sacrifice, but sacrificing things that don't matter for things that do matter. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. one of the big things when you start talking about sacrifice and balance that a lot of people, when, when we talk about it and, and I share it with my coaching clients, it's like, yeah, we, you have your real estate goals, but you got to have life goals. You got to have relationship goals. You got to look at the physical. You got to be in shape. With, you're going to make all this money. You, you got high blood pressure. You're stressed out. And you can't even, you know, you, you can have a heart attack and not even be here to spend it. Or now you, you, you're you all in on real estate, but your wife wants a divorce. Or you can't oh. get your goods because, you know, you're all, and I found myself was like, okay, I'm in the basement and all this. And like, Faye tell you, like, I told Faye, I'm like, I'm not doing any more podcasts because it's like my, it's taking up too much of my time. And I was like, I got to spend time with my kid, my nine-year-old, I'm like, hey, me see with his man. So I was like, I can't, I can't dedicate four or five hours in the evenings to shoot being on other people's podcasts because I'm like, it's not that important to me compared to everything else. And you you got to find that balance and you can chase and look at somebody else's life you see the the pictures on instagram you know the the, the thousand units and everything I'm like but they own a thousand units with five other general partners they only own 15 percent of the deal and exactly it's like <laughs> that's, that's not it there's an easier way yeah well also like you know i use the word sacrifice a lot and i believe in that but also I it really is a shift in mentality. Like people, the problem is, is that money is easy to measure and fulfillment is not easy to measure. And so like, dude, I actually don't make sacrifice. I want to be wealthy in many areas. And so like, um, I think about it like a house. I, I use this analogy all the time. You got a house and like your house has 10 rooms and it's like money is one of the rooms and your spouse is another room and your kids relations are another room and where you live and like your environment and you know, what you come home to and that ambiance and that vibe, that's one room. And your health is another room. And the amount of the world that you've seen and experienced is another room. And um, your spirituality and your peace, right? These are, and so these are all rooms, right? And like, what happens is people are like, you know, they decorate up one of those rooms real good. Mm -hmm. Like that room's got all the gold walls, right? All the money's going, all the resources are going to the room that makes money. So you're like, man, that room's tight. The room of the spouse, that room's on fire. Right. And let me tell you something. Fire, like the door is not going to compartmentalize mm. the fire. The fire is going to get out. It's going to burn the house down. And so you don't have, your life is not compartmentalized like that. Or if it is, it's compartmentalized with doors. Like, like flammable doors. And so you have to like sort of keep a holistic house. And it can be a big fancy house and you know what dude my buddy i, I got a buddy this street he's wildly successful brandon turner five minute walk from here right you can do all of it 
And so this is kind of like where I know that people who are like sacrificing their areas of their life for money. I'm like, I bet you, if you spent more time on the relationships, on the worldliness, on the learning, on the life, you'd actually make more money. Mm, that's a bar. Yeah, because like that dude, that dude, he will not text you on Saturday. He's like, family day. I don't text. I don't work. I, I don't care. I don't care if my billion dollar company needs a problem. It's like, I'll talk to you tomorrow because I just don't, I just don't, um, I don't mess with those. I don't, I don't mix those. So I know it can be done. I think we, uh, I think people are just, you know, I'm not there, but um, I won't sacrifice my, I know I won't sacrifice my camera to buy another apartment building. Never going to happen. So like, or my world travel, you know, we're going to walk from Portugal, Porto, Porto Portugal to um, Santiago de Compostela. It's called the, it's a hike called the Camino de Santiago. I did one last year. I'm going to do one this year. We're going to go from Porto, Portugal to, to Spain. It's 120 miles over 13 days. Nice. And like biz, work is second. Spirituality is first. So I don't know. I, there's people who are watching this, I'm sure, that are like, okay, I just want, I, my life's fine. I just need more money. And like, I'm, I apologize that like, if I'm not the right <laughs> messenger for that, but I do know, and Johnny, I know you know deep, like there's people in our community that you see them on the internet and they seem one way, but when you actually talk to them, they're like, yo, my wife's going to leave me. I'm always stressed out. Yeah. They're out, of, they're out of shape. They hate it. Like their life is not perfect. Their life is sort of a mess, but they're like, God, I got a thousand units and they're bragging about that. And so what you see on the internet is like, dude, it's a fraud. Uh, not always, but a lot of it. So it's very important to be like, get financial freedom and then use that to fuel a higher order of freedom. Yep. No, a hundred percent. And and that's what it's all about. And I think that happens a lot of times in our career where we associate our worth with our job title. You know, you see it in the military, people that, you know, 30 years and then you leave and unfortunately they commit suicide. They get, they go through multiple divorces because they can't find that balance. And all they know is the mission, the mission um, and the camaraderie. And then they leave and retire. And it's like, what am I going to do with my life now? Every, everything that I've associated my worth with is gone overnight and uh it's tough and so that's 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 something that we all have to achieve that balance and try to find that perfect zen and kind of continuously going on that journey in which we always try to get there but it, and that's the thing that i tell people you it, it's okay you may have this week you may have to go all in in one area but now you got to get back in phase you got to come back and balance and like you said you got to go into that other room and put that little flame that's starting to burn you gotta put that flame out before it gets too big and the whole house comes tumbling down the military is a really good example because people wrap their identity up with their military um career and they're like well i was a, you know i did four years in the army and fort bragg and i was attached to a third third special forces group so like these guys are 20 year green berets and like that's their identity and they get out and then it's like you know I, I hate to say this but you know who cares you were in the military once you get out nobody nobody cares anymore they're like you're not in charge of anybody. You're not. No, no, nope, nobody cares. You're just you're better. You're a veteran, and we're happy and thank you and all that stuff. But like now, what have you done for me lately? And so people, like they do, they lose their identity. And this is another reason why money is so important or fame, because you get your rap. You're like, oh, I'm a re successful real estate investor. I'm like, let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you right now, the market does this. And so it's easy to be hot when the market's hot. But when the market comes down and you lose money, or you're an investor of some sort, and you lose money, or maybe it just you're not buying anything. It's like, who are you now? Right. You don't want that. You don't want your identity wrapped up in some sort of like um, superficial success. It, it, it's got to be, it's got to be deeper than that. It's got to be bigger. It's got to be something bigger than you. No, a hundred percent. So what's next, man? I'm not going to ask about the, the project. I know, you know, it's a lot coming behind the scenes, but kind of what's, what's Nick big, big picture for Alex, what you're kind of looking towards. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, there's a, so it's already been launched. Brandon Turner is going to launch a, it's a, it's kind of a lot of things that we're talking about. It's, um, it's a large scale mastermind. Small, it's a small group mastermind at scale. So, and it'll be, um, it'll be a holistic sort of thing. And so that's kind of why I'm such a good fit. Cause I'm like already singing this, this song. Okay. Um, but he needed somebody to be a creative director. Right. And so um, to, to move out to Maui and 
you know, create original content um, about this, this sort of project and what he's got going on. And, you know, and this is kind of what I, where I feel like finally, like my story, you know, the things that I believed in and sort of hoped were going to be true down the road, like do what you do what's right, even though it doesn't seem like success, like now it's sort of coming to fruition. So somebody said, hey, you know, the real estate market, you know, the bigger pocket story, you know, the Brandon Turner story, you know, the real estate investors and how to speak to that audience. And we need that. But we also need somebody who's really, really good with the camera. Mm. Nobody in the world can do it like me. Nobody in the world can do cameras and like, and knows the real estate industry. Like, you know, I'm not a real estate photographer. I'm an event photographer. I, I capture people. And so like, nobody's been able to, and so it just so happened to work out that when this person's like, hey, I get this real estate company, but I need to create original content. That's not just like marketing, but like deeply, um, you know, I want to tell stories about human beings. And so he flew, he's going to basically, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm going to move out to Maui and we're going to do this full time. Uh, it's called Better Life. Um, and so this is sort of my justification for all the, so I've been singing this song for a very long time. And I'm like, see, look, it works. Cause people will notice that you're, um, that you're, that you're more than just one thing. Because if you're just like, Hey, I'm the real estate investor and somebody, the problem is if you're just one thing, if you're just a real estate investor, then it's like, well, I'll go get the best one. But if you're diverse, if you're like, Hey, I was a real estate investor. I'm a creator. I was in the military. I have this podcast, right? You want to have these other things going on, right? I'm a family man. I'm, I'm this, I'm that. I'm well-traveled. Like, new doors open up because now you're an interesting and unique person that only has your unique qualities. And so that's why it's so important to be like um, diverse. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to ask you, uh, we got a few people in the room tonight. Anybody have any questions? You can come off mute. Don't be shy. Hey, you got anything? I okay, do. be shy. <laughs> I actually hear... have a lot. I see <laughs> we got I one. Can. I see Reggie came off mute. Hey, okay. can you hear? Yep, we can hear you. Man, I just feel like I got a steroid shot with all that motivation. <laughs> I said, man. I said, listen. Um, I I got one quick question. Number one, um, how can we get in touch with you? I have a podcast that's uh dealing with real estate investing. I I've never seen you speak before. Man, I would love to have you come on there and, and got dog give that fire out to my audience, man. I mean, you fire me up. Yeah. Um, Instagram is probably easiest. Alex Scott Felice. I'll link, I'll put it in the link, actually. Okay. Happy, most to, happy to dude. If I can be useful to somebody, I say yes. Most definitely. I appreciate it, man. Thank you again. Yeah. And you can follow me on YouTube just because. I don't sell anything on YouTube. I just like, I don't even tell, I don't even do stories that YouTube really likes. I just tell like, I just basically go on an adventure and share it. Nobody cares. YouTube definitely doesn't care, but I'm going to get my little subscribers. I'm going to get four of them tonight, one at a time. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but yeah, uh, Reggie, happy to help if I can. No, most definitely. I, for real, uh, I normally have like a bunch of questions, man, but I got to be honest, what you gave tonight is so humbling. I think a lot of speakers to give a lot of crazy motivational fluff, but you just, as they say, keep it real. And, um, you know, just kept it simple, man. And that's what we need. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Yeah. And I guess it's worthy to mention as well that um, I think it was like uh, since last year when I started following Alex, but he just really doesn't care about anything. <laughs> he was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it my way or this is my life, right? Like, and the, the problem with people, as he alluded to earlier, is conformity. Like where everyone else is going, people tend to think that, oh, that's the right thing because that's where people are going. But he was like, no, this is my life. I'm going to design it the way that I wanted to design it. And, and yeah, um, now he is also working with, with Brandon Turner, Bigger Pockets, and this is really just freedom is, is something that you define yourself. It, it's not about a definition that you see in the book, that you see on how people, how you define it. It's a freedom that you, it, it, it's how you define it here and, and here, as, as he mentioned. And I'm truly like 100% blown away by that. 
and also agree 100% with that. It's, it's not about what everyone else is, is doing. It's, it's about how you define your own freedom. I, I would like to make one comment. We said Alex doesn't care. I do care. <laughs> <laughs> with? But I'm just teasing. You said, oh, Alex doesn't care about anything. I said, no, I care about a lot. But actually, I think that's, I think that's sort of what allows me to do what I do is I do care a lot. But that's why I'm like, I have to be the way that I believe in it. What I don't care about is that other people think that I'm like, oh, you're doing it wrong. I'm like, great. I mm -hmm. Tell somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, you know, and I think that's the thing that you have to have that freedom because, you know, being in the military over 17 years and that conforming in the box, you can't, you can't be in uniform talking about real estate. You can't share both stories. It's like, you know, I, and I had to get to the point where I was like, you know what? I'm going to share the story. There's some people out there that's looking for financial freedom. Hey, I may, if I help one person, so be it. It's, it's worth it. And just uh, just sharing my story, being authentically me and who, and everything that comes with it, um, good and bad, and just being able to live with it. And yeah, it's definitely a, a, a freeing piece where you can know that, hey, you stand on what you stand. And regardless of whatever box somebody else puts you in, if, if it works, perfect. If they're wrong, if they're right, it doesn't matter. That um, at the end of the day, you're being authentically yourself. You can look in the mirror and know, hey, I get, hey, I gave it my best shot today. And guess what? I'm gonna get up in the morning. And we're gonna roll at it, and we're gonna do it again. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, you know, you put out content, like you said, and it's like, dude, I've seen you making content for a long time, so I know that it's worked for you. So I, I think that's like part of the other thing that people, it's it's worse is that they don't ever try. And so like, you know, this thing that you're scared of, you know, content, even for me, I, I, I don't put out as much content as I would want to, because sometimes I, I get scared or it's, it's awkward or it's that, but I do put out a lot, but um, when you try it, it's almost all overwhelmingly positive. And so like, the thing is like living your authentic self, the risk is very, very low. The reward is unbelievably high. And so like, we don't do it and we're scared of it. And like, I understand why and that it's scary and all these things, but like, it's a, it's a mental block because again, people will appreciate you for your authenticity. They generally, they rarely say like negative things. They're like, oh, tell your truth, go do it. Like it's very low risk, very high reward. Yep. No, I love it. I love it. Any questions? Anybody else? Any questions before, uh, we let Alex give us some part departing words. I mean, I want to spend it all day <laughs> just, just just hearing all these things. I mean, but yeah, I think uh, my biggest takeaway for tonight's session is like really keeping an eye on how how he talked about our life is like a house that has compartments, right? But a lot of people, a lot of us, including myself could be just totally focused on one compartment, which is the financial freedom. But how about the rest, our relationships, our spirituality, our physical, all these other things that we sometimes, or most of the time tend to forget, and I'm guilty on that, um, of that as well, is it's really important. We don't want one room to be set on fire and the rest will be just worthless. So yeah, I think that's some deep, deep deep thoughts to think about tonight so <laughs> yeah there's a lot of questions that i'm cramming i mean i'm craving for for answers that i think i'm I reading more books um the the wisest man in babylon is one Stranger oh, Secret by earl nightingale um Any i got a book. book recommendation well uh, i have a book page on my website you can go check out there's i haven't updated in a little while but there's a lot of books on there that you a lot of them you probably have never heard of, but I'll tell you one book that I guarantee you nobody in this room has read that, you know, it was good for me. I don't know if it's good for everybody universally, but I'll, I'll share it. It's a kind of a short book. It's called Letters to a Young Contrarian. And it's by this guy named Chris Hitchens, um, who I liked him a lot more in a younger age, but he's still one of my first favorite heroes. And the whole book is, how do you go through life disagreeing with society at large? And so it's basically him writing letters to somebody who's like, hey, I don't agree with religion. How do I face the world if I don't agree with religion? And how do I, you know, 
I'm being self-centered or I don't want to rock the boat or I don't want to offend people or how do I deal with all of these like sort of things where I feel like I, I should go against the grain, but then I don't. And then I'm unhappier for it to appease other people. Like, how do I deal with that? And so the whole book is him writing letters to this young contrarian saying like, here's how you sort of get the courage to go against the grain. And so that book was really impactful for me and not a popular book, but it was, it, it was very meaningful for me. No, also can you can give us the title of that book one more time? Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Letters to a young contrarian. Yeah, I definitely added that to my book. My book note. I think he narrates it on Audible. He's he's passed away now, but I think he um, I think he narrates it. It was one of his last books that he that he got to narrate. Um, oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, Alex, any other, any parting words before we uh, conclude tonight, just for the audience? I appreciate you coming out, man. This has been phenomenal. Um, I definitely, and I, I think that's something I got to definitely do more sharing or just outside of real estate. Yeah, with, with if people coming to the circle for real estate, but sharing a lot of those different tools that I use and others use to be successful outside of real estate, to keep a balanced life at home at work and they still had a day job and, and everything in between working out all this stuff dude people want people want fulfilling lives they want to learn real estate but they don't want to they don't want to really make everything a sacrifice to have just real estate they want to fulfill they want a full life and so i think you know i rarely go on podcasts and talk about real estate i, I can i can have those conversations but they're like it's like i want to give you i can give you better advice I can tell you, I can give you something more valuable. And so I'm just like, this is better. And I'm sorry if it's not like, here's how you do a burr and here's how you do delayed finance. And that's on my blog. You can read it all, but like, I can give you something more valuable. And so, yeah, I think if you have a guest on or whatever, it's like, dude, get what's most valuable from them. Not what's happens to be the name of the podcast. Like, hey, it's real estate. It's like, okay, but also what's, what do you have that's most valuable? That's what's most important. 100%. Um, yeah. Parting advice. I had a guy. Josh Dorkin, he posted on Twitter a few years ago something. Josh Dorkin was the founder of Bigger Pockets, and he said, it's just simple advice, but he's like, look, you're not stuck. Not with that job, not with that relationship, not with that body, not with any of the things you feel like or think you're stuck with. You can change it tomorrow. You just have to, you just have to have the uncomfortable decision. And so, you know, it's not profound advice. And it's something everybody's like, we know this. It's just hard. But that vice, like with that day, really shaped things in my life. And so now, like, that's what I kick, that's what I try to like, you know, when things are not going well and I'm like, we got to make some changes. I'm like, well, we just got to make some changes. And we're not stuck. Yep, no, 100%. More deep thoughts to think about. <laughs> you are the controller of your destiny. Yes. Thanks, um, Alex. Really appreciate you being on here, and I look forward to to you know having you on on more, <laughs> more other shows. Yeah, I'll oh, post yeah. some I'll post some shit talk on Facebook in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man! I can't wait to see this uh this rollout, man. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, this this new mastermind and knowing yeah, knowing, the, knowing the man behind it. Yeah, yeah. It's called um. Right now, the URL is um. Is it the or uh? The better a better life tribe dot com uh a better life tribe dot com is what the current URL is. Okay, okay. Okay, we're gonna check it out. Awesome. Thanks, Good Johnny. Seeing you, brother. Thanks, Tay. Yeah, man. Hey, keep hey, keep living, loving life out there, man. I wish I could be able to yeah. Hawaii right now. Can't yeah, stop me. Come on out. Thank awesome. you. I'm I'm gonna have 600 square foot of house. I can't have I can't put you up, but come hang out. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. All right, man. All right, Take well. care. All right. Have a good evening, everyone.